Every morning when I wake up, all I want to do is to be honest with all of you. To share my thoughts, my feelings, and share my journey. To show you guys what van life really is like. From the epic moments, to the emotional hard moments, to the days where we're just doing the everyday mundane, like doing laundry or cleaning the van. All I want out of this channel is to inspire one person every day. To show you guys all aspects of this life. And talk to you about the hard times when I'm having them. Like right now. I question sometimes if the honeymoon phase of van life is over. Is this where things get difficult? Is this where my van life stops? Because I do wake up some mornings and... I don't want to do anything. But then I wake up the next day and it's the most epic day of my life and I couldn't imagine living any other way. I just want to be honest with you guys and show you my everyday van life. Sometimes I wonder if I got... Too many pillows on my bed. All right, crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, did I just throw all the pillows on you? You just stood there and didn't care. I'm pretty sure having four decorative pillows is not a manly thing to do but it makes my bed look good when we went to bed yesterday it was beautiful outside now well in typical west coast fashion we are back to rain the morning routine the time in your day where you get to wake up somewhere brand new and get outside and wonder if this place is going to hold you here for another day or if you're going to move on down the road I kind of like this little, this little misty, cloudy, foggy, kind of has this like movie-like feel to it. It's crazy because before I started this whole van life thing, I would have never have found a rainy day beautiful. I would never be out somewhere camping or doing anything outdoorsy like this in the rain. No? <laughs> I love this stuff. There's a piece of my heart sometimes that says it's time to slow down. It's time to park your van somewhere and enjoy a community and live there for a little while. Get to know some people, make some friends, and get to know the roads by name. But then I got the other side of me that is super loud in my head that says let's go every single day. It won't let me sit still for more than one night. If I have to stay for two nights, it's a huge battle. We gotta go to the front here and see if we can find a parks guy and pay for this campsite. Nobody came through last night and I haven't seen anybody yet here this morning. So uh, I think there's a, a front office up here we're gonna go pop into. Okay, um, system's <laughs> not up yet, I just walked in. We're here a little early, they haven't quite opened yet. Um, so yeah, parking was 26 bucks or camping was $26. Uh, so worth it. That was an amazing and beautiful night. And you guarantee that this boy will be back here again. <laughs> seatbelt, chrome seatbelt. <laughs> it's a noisy door there. Uh, over here, there's always a lot of scuba divers. Scuba divers. Well, I can't even spit that word out this morning. Scuba divers. Uh, usually over here because I guess um, I've never obviously been down there but I hear that there's a sunken ship out there um, that the divers can uh, swim around and check out so that would be pretty damn awesome to go see anyway guys we're heading back into Squamish van life is a lot of different things to everybody what it means to me is gonna mean something completely different to you some people are getting into this lifestyle just to relax just to go park their van by the beach or a lake or in the backcountry somewhere and just escape the life that they're not happy with. 
Some people, sitting static is exactly what the heart needs. You know, maybe move around every couple of weeks or every month. Some people love that stuff. You see, for me, I didn't get into van life to relax. I got into van life because I needed something different with my life that I felt creatively as a person my old lifestyle wasn't working out anymore. So I dropped it all, sold it all, because I was seeking something bigger. And I think for me, that's why I move around so much is because I'm trying to just, I don't know, find that creative part of me that makes me feel alive. And sitting still for me, I feel like I lose a major part of my creativity. For me, van life is all about movement. I have never stayed here before. We are at Porto Cove Campground. It's an Oceanside campground. They start all the way down. They end down there. They go all the way as far as you can see. Things can be noisy sometimes. And I'm not just talking about the noise of the towns and the cities and industries working. I'm talking about the noise in your head. And the noise from other people. I know there's a lot of you that watch this channel that are having a hard time getting into van life because of those around them that are just saying what they feel and that's causing a lot of noise inside of your head. You need to listen to your own voice. And sometimes that means going out somewhere, finding a bit of solitude, so you can block out all that noise that you don't need to listen to because if somebody's got an opinion about what you do with your life, what you need in your life, that's them just trying to make you live the same miserable life that they do. You need to block those voices out. You need to find that moment in your day where your voice is loud and clear and listen to you. I don't need to sit still forever to find calmness because in moments like this one right here is where my voice is loud and clear. Wow. This little town of Squamish is pretty damn incredible. All right, guys. I had a friend of mine message me the other day that watches my channel and he asked me if I'm doing okay. He said I've been a little bit calm in my videos lately and he's a little worried about me. I told him don't worry I got the greatest job on the planet. That I get to go out here and live my life and make videos for a living. That I'm doing okay. Then he asked me about the honeymoon phase of my van life. He asked me if it was over. Here I am thinking I'm being, you know, smart, going upstairs, having a shower, <laughs> get out of the shower and start to dry myself off. I'm like, why do I smell like a brewery? I forgot last night I used this towel to wipe up a spilt beer in the van. <laughs> now I smell like a fresh brewed IPA. <laughs> My mask is falling off. <sighs> <sighs> I still feel good though. Way better than I did about 10 minutes ago. Oh. Oh. Hey man! <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I was cleaning. Well, you see, you're back to normal. Cut the video off. <laughs> you can do your chin-ups on that though. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a nice job. No. <laughs> so, uh... How do you get it? Oh, I Jeffy put up his curtain rod. <laughs> yeah, got a little slot in there. I was thinking of you. I know you're beep. You and you, you, you two beep haunt me. Haunt me. Haunt me. <laughs> We're in your. This one, this one says, Google it, YouTube it. You say nice and easy to get in and out. So you haunt me every time I think of something. <laughs> when Jeffy's wrong, go back to feet one and two. No, you just make editing hard. There's going to be a lot of beep, 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 beep. Oh, well. <laughs> Jeffy Bear turned into the Roadrunner. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I could probably use the Roadrunner sound over yeah. top of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's Emmy, there's Emmy. <laughs> yeah, back in Squamish. I wasn't expecting to come back to Squamish today. I'm staying at the good old... Uh, Hotel Wally World tonight and uh, the reason why we came back here is because 
A while ago, we sold a ton of stickers for Jeffy Bear, and that raised enough money to buy him a swivel seat. Um, I ordered the seat through a company here in Squamish called Off Grid Customs, and they will be installing Jeff's swivel seat for him tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm super excited for him. And uh, Jeff also bought himself a window for the side of his van. He bought it at an auto wrecker for like 75 or $100 or something like that. So uh, the boys at Off Grid Customs are going to be installing that for him tomorrow too. Uh, I'm pretty excited that those guys have offered to donate their time. Um, you guys bought the swivel seat, but they're gonna be donating their time tomorrow to um, help, uh, help our sweet Jeffy Bear out. Anyway, me and Cruz are gonna go out for a, a nice little evening walk here. When I started to move every day at the beginning of van life, that's where me and van life fell in love. So I don't think my honeymoon phase is ever going to be over as long as me and van life keep moving on down the road. <laughs> this thing is pretty sweet. I've driven by this tons of times, just never walked over through this plaza. On the top of that giant tower, all that's up there are advertising signs for the businesses back here. Pretty cool, it looks like a pretty big water tower. <laughs> Maneuvering around inside of my van on my knees is something that you just kind of get used to. For the longest time, my knees were in horrible shape. <laughs> they looked like they were kind of like abused. They were brutally beaten up. But uh, I've been keeping them a little bit better nowadays with a little scrubby thing. Oh, uh, where is it here? I use it when I shower. It's like this little stone. It's like a, a lava rock or something. Um, it's great. Just scrub it over the top of the knees and my knees look normal. Um, all it took was just a little bit of love and care instead of me just leaving it alone, being a man, get, letting them get all like... Because they were like calloused. My knees look so bad. Now they're they're all good now. Hey, Chris, are you hungry? Oh. oh, yeah. A little medical care on my hand. <laughs> Look at it, did. Look at it. This is what happens when I touch any type of construction material or tool. I hurt myself. Every time. I can't touch a screwdriver. Bang! Cut myself. I can't touch a piece of sandpaper. Bang! Hurt myself. This is why I've always hired somebody to do all my building construction work. Because if I were to touch something like that, it would probably be like, Bang! Chrome, where'd your finger go? Oh, built a cabinet. <laughs> Come on. Sandpaper. I literally shaved a big chunk into my knuckle. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm really, really pumped up for tomorrow. It's gonna be super exciting uh, to see Jeff's reaction when he gets to sit in his swivel seat for the very first time. And now he'll be able to sit in his house, not up front in his vehicle when he's doing his carvings and stuff like that. He'll actually be able to come around, sit inside of his house, put his feet up on something, and just be at home instead of being at the front seat where the world can see him up there shaving and carving up a piece of wood. I'm super stoked on tomorrow. Um, so I'm probably gonna be back to Squamish. I don't know when, I do still have the doors. So I bought, um, sorry, I bought new sets of doors for the side of my van because mine are super rusty. Um, those are at the storage locker of Sharing the Wild. So I'm going to, um, probably come back pick them up and take them over to Vancouver Island at some point but yet we were talking today and I actually might install them out here that way I can dispose of them that way they're out of they're out of his locker and these can just go to the local garbage dump or uh, a recycling place of some kind 
And uh, then when John's got time on the island, we'll make a trek over there and uh, get the doors all prettied up and make them all look nice and fancy. Um, I still got to go through that video from the other day where I said I was looking for a body guy to do some body work on my van. I still got to dig through that and see if there's anybody out here that's willing to... Uh, willing to help us out with like cleaning up some of the rest on that side um if not i think i'm going to give um lilo at auto body a phone call that's the guy that did my body work last time uh, and then we'll make it just a trek up into the snow i'm pretty sure there's probably snow up there uh, up in lilo which is probably a handful of hours uh just just um north of us here Anyway, guys, we're going to let you go. I'm going to go get myself a great night's sleep tonight. Super pumped for tomorrow. And that will be tomorrow's video. Will be the big smile on Jeff's face as we uh, install his window and his swivel seat. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go. Thanks for watching. And uh, oh, yeah, funny story. When I threw my drone up in the air today, <laughs> I hooked the drone up and it's over the ocean. And I'm like, ah, flying around, being super excited. All of a sudden, boom warning pops up on my phone which is connected to the to the controller and it says boom signal to the aircraft gone what no movement nothing not a nothing <gasps> my drone's over the ocean and then all of a sudden boom pop back in i'm like what would i do <laughs> my drone's just hanging over the ocean somewhere it's just gonna stay there so um and I think the GPS signal was really weak, so it wouldn't be able to find its way back home. But my stomach just kind of whoo, just dropped. I'm like, no, no, don't lose the drone. Not yet. Uh, I love that little thing. I am so stoked that I picked up that drone. That's been definitely a fun part of my day. And it's been like playing with a remote control car. So not, not only does it get great footage for here and allow me to tell a bigger story on my channel... It's just been fun. I feel like a kid when I throw it up. I'll do this. Zzz, I'm like, the drone's up. Anyway, guys. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow. Making these videos for me can be very therapeutic sometimes. It's a great way for me just to talk things out that are going on inside of me. And hopefully some of these help out some of you guys that might be going through the same thing. If you're worried about the honeymoon phase of van life being over, just keep moving.